What's up everyone? This is Felix. Welcome back to InventBox where the solution is right around the corner. In this series, I want to teach you guys how to set up your very own website and host it yourself. Now, why might you want to host your own website? Well, for one, it's cool. Two, it's free. When I first learned how to set this up on my own, it was because I love free stuff. I hate spending money when I don't have to. And it's actually not that hard to set up your own website. When you combine all those things, that's a green flag for me. Now, before you can set up your own website server, you need to have a basic understanding of how the internet works. Most tutorials for this stuff just walk through how to do it, but they don't really explain why. So I want to explain how and why this works so that you can do what you want, not just exactly what I do. And if something breaks, then you have no idea what went wrong, yada, yada. So you will be able to fix your own website and do what you want with it. So let's say you buy squid.com. If you type it in, your computer doesn't initially know what squid.com even means or where it should go to find it. Computers talk to each other using a number address called an IP address. It's similar to how you can send a text to a phone number and your friend will get your message. You can't just dial your friend's name. There's a phone number that the phone system recognizes as an address. With that in mind, let's take a look at what happens as you type google.com into your browser. Well, if your computer has never been to google.com, then it doesn't know what that means. So it goes and asks another computer called a name server. The name server is basically a list that relates all of the website names to their IP addresses, to their computer addresses. The first name server that your computer probably talks to is your router. Then, if your router doesn't know what the website name means, then it'll go to another name server, which might be your internet service provider. And if they don't know, then they will go ask the root name servers, which are essentially the center of the internet. The internet is a very relative structure, but we have defined that the root servers are the official complete lists of all of the website names and their addresses. So if you want your website to show up in the internet, then you have to somehow talk to some name servers, eventually the root name servers, so that everybody knows where your website lives. So your computer just did all of this at inquiring about where google.com lives, and it finally gets to the root name servers and they say, Google lives at this IP address. That gets forwarded back and back and back and back until it finally gets to your computer. Then your computer knows that google.com lives at this address, and so it goes to that address, and Google's web server lives there. So Google's web server has all of the code for their website. They spit that out, the HTML code, and that gets sent back to your computer. And now at long last, your computer can display a beautiful web page that is google.com. Looking at this system, if we wanted to do all of this for free, there are two connections that we need to make sure happen. One is the name server or linking your computer's address to your website name called the domain name. And 
Two, you need to have a web server that has the code for your website that can send it when people ask for it. This system up here is free. It's like the foundation of what the internet is. This is what you usually pay for, building a web server. And so I'm gonna show you how to tap into this and how to build one of these for free. So there are a few things that we're gonna need in order to do all of this and make it happen. First, you need a computer that you can leave on all the time. If we look back at our diagram, imagine if your computer that has your website on it is turned off. When other people find its address and go look for it, it's off. They can't get your website. So you have to make sure that your computer can stay on all the time. Two, you need to have a web server software, which we are going to be using something called Apache, which is probably the most common software to use. Then you need to have a domain name, which like I said, that's just your website name, google.com, squid.com, baconisamazing.com, something like that. And then you need to have a way to link your domain name to your IP address of the web server. And we do that through something called DNS, domain name servers, or DDNS, which is dynamic domain name system. I'm guessing that because you're watching this video, you don't want to spend any money. And if you want to keep this totally free and reliable, then you're going to want to use DDNS, dynamic DNS. And that just means it keeps updating these name servers with your web server's IP address, even if it changes. And if you don't want it to change, then of course you have to pay money, but who wants to do that? And lastly, of course, you need a website. And you're gonna need to have some code. That's gonna be the HTML that we saw over here that your website is gonna give back to everybody who asks about your website. And if you don't have any code for your website, there are plenty of softwares out there that can help you generate it, or I will walk you through some basics and I have another tutorial on website design. In the next video, or next videos I should say, I will have two, one for setting up your Apache web server on whatever computer you choose. One video will be for if you are using a Windows operating system, and I'll also have a video for Linux or Mac if that's what you decide to use. Let's do this.